Hello there. Welcome to my studio. My name is Teresa Eckholm, and I'm so glad you joined me. Unfortunately, I have some kind of unpleasant news to share with you today. So last night I was kind of complain as I was doing my video, I was complaining that the paint uh, didn't. It just it came out of the tube in a really funny way, and uh, but I, I I added water and I added some other paint and mixed it together anyway, and painted my sculpture project. The problem with that is that it really smelled bad, and so I will first share with you my my sculpture project. So the texture and everything with the paint turned out kind of interesting, but ugh, I'm going to have to throw this, comp I just have to throw it away. It's just, it's just awful. Uh, let me show you one more thing though, because I want to show you where we're going, with, where, where I'll be going with this next. Um, it, it might have turned out really cool, but here's the deal. Oof. Boy, lesson learned. Uh, I didn't know that paint could go bad in such a way, I'm trying to turn off the light here, that, that it would not even be usable. I thought it would just kind of get dry and maybe you could add water and revive it again because it is a water, acrylic paint is a water-based paint. So I went ahead and did some research on Google and here's some of the things that I, I came up with. So, okay, the the first um, and most obvious example of paint going bad is that it dries up in the tube, right? You've seen this, of course. It goes chunky. That's one of the things that I complained about. Uh, once acrylic paint becomes lumpy, the best thing to do is to replace it. Don't bother trying to smooth it out. That's what I tried to do. Uh, next is paint will actually separate into different components. Uh, it doesn't mean that, that doesn't necessarily mean the paint is bad, but the way to tell if paint has gone bad is by the smell. Now, don't, I don't necessarily recommend you go around snipping your tubes of paint um, because what makes it go bad is bacteria and mold. So if it's been exposed to air and there happen to be mold spores or bacteria in the air, uh, you can actually in, inhale them and that's a really bad idea. So I don't necessarily recommend you do that, but as soon as you smell it, then just get rid of it. So I already got rid of the paint last night I'm getting rid of my poor sculpture tomorrow, or tonight actually, it's going in the trash can. And then tomorrow uh, I will be starting afresh with a brand new stand, so I expect the whole thing to go a lot smoother and, and, and probably my next creation will be even better because that's kind of how it goes when we're starting a new journey. So you can remix separated paint. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the only smell you usually smell, with this, this, according to this author, um, is that uh, acrylic paint has a slight smell or slight scent of ammonia, uh, which is typically added to paint to prevent spoiling, so that makes sense. So, hello, Samil. Good to see you here. That's interesting. And hello, Gary. Wow, thanks for being on with me. So, uh, let's see what else do we have here. And... All right, so mold, I already talked about the mold. If it's visible, obviously, just pitch it and don't even bother. But in this case, I didn't see anything. It looked fine. The other issue, of course, is having paint in tubes. Um, here's the issue with tubes. Just show you real quick. Not that this is terrible paint or anything. However, because it's in a tube, there's no way to get it out without, when you open it up, and you squeeze out the, the paint, and then you put the lid back on, air gets inside the tube. So eventually, you have a strong possibility of this going bad, especially if you don't use it quickly enough. The better idea is to get a better, to get a better, well, not this particular brand, but to get a paint that's in a different container that's easier to use than a tube. So I, tubes are just kind of a pain, and I'm not gonna buy, my next set of paints will not be in tubes, acrylic paints, that is. Uh, partially because of this issue. So, just to, to, to another note I will add is that one of the tubes of paint that I was using last night, I actually bought apparently when it was already old. So as I was getting ready to throw it away, I saw it had a sticker on it that said, sold as is, you may not return, which means probably somebody else had already returned and they resold it to me. So, <clears throat> note to self, don't do that, don't bother. Spend the extra money. You're going to make high quality art and use high quality paints. In this case, I'm not too upset because I was just teaching myself a new technique that I was creating on the fly. So, 
but still, it might have been cool if it had really worked. So, um, hello, Peta. Glad to have you on as well. So then here's uh, how to extend the shelf life of acrylic paints. So this is what you'll find useful, I hope, is stored in an airtight container. And uh, um, brand new containers of paint should be left sealed until you plan on using them. And once you open a tube of or jar of paint, make sure you put the cap back on so it forms an airtight seal. That said, even with a really airtight seal, paints can get dry and, 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 and awful. It, typically they last five to seven years, but with really, really good care, you can make them last 10 to 15 years. My better advice is to use them up and have, have lots of fun with them so this doesn't end up being an issue at all. So um, metal tubes can break along the larger creases. If your paint is in metal tubes, try not to crease the tubes excessively, and it shouldn't link, leak. Sorry. The other thing is avoid storing paints, acrylic paints, in extreme temperatures. So think about not putting them in your garage. Um, and if you leave them in your studio, try to keep them in a place that's room temperature, room temperature such that you would enjoy. That's going to be a good. A, a good thing. So according to uh, Golden Paints, which is a really high quality paint company, acrylic paint can survive being frozen, uh, but they don't recommend it. Ordering acrylics online in the winter means your acrylic paints could be sitting on an unheated truck overnight. So also the package may sit on your porch long enough to freeze. So I know it's the middle of summer, it's hard, hard to think about that, but if you're not going to go buy your paints from a local supplier, consider maybe uh, make creating your stock or building up your stock now for the winter time. So, um, and the other thing is plain air painters should not leave their acrylics inside of their car for extended periods. Well, as we know, just like hot cars can kill uh, human beings, children, and pets, apparently they can kill your paint. So don't leave them for extended uh, hours in your hot car. And don't contaminate uh, unused paint. So believe it or not, tap water is a, a contaminant. I did not know this. Tap water contains microbes and minerals. And if you add tap water to a jar of acrylic paint, which is what I'm guilty of doing actually, and store it for a few, for a few years, it will probably develop mold. And then if you want to thin out your paints with uh, water and store them for an extended period, use distilled water. Uh, unlike tap water, distilled water should be free from, hopefully, from microbes and minerals. Dipping a wet paintbrush into a jar of water could introduce tap water into the paint, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. So another source of contaminants is foreign matter. Some artists like to add sand or pumice to their paint to give it texture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also one of these people who likes to do that. But honestly, what I do when I, when I mix my paints with different things to give it texture, is I either put the texture directly on the canvas first or the, the sculpture, whatever it is I'm working on, and then I paint it. Uh, the other thing is I pour the paint uh, out into a separate bowl or something else um, so that, um, sorry, <laughs> so that I don't contaminate the paint that it came from. I use that same uh, philosophy when I'm using things like my textile hardeners, whichever brand that I use, I, I pour this out and then mix it or dilute it or add colors to it or whatever it is I do and I never ever pour it back into this container. I don't care how much I have. If I pour too much, well there you have it. Uh, what I do actually, and it, it kind of works semi well, is um, I did have some left over. I wrapped it in saran wrap and um, if it lasts until I use it again, great. And if it doesn't, I'm I'm happy to pitch it because I, I don't need contaminated stuff. So I just wanted to pop on here and share with you my lesson learned and um, hopefully you will find some way to, some that beneficial to you, especially when you're painting or preparing to paint and that kind of thing. So And regularly go through and at least look at your paints, maybe don't snip them, but <laughs> don't be afraid to throw away your paints. It's just not worth it. Uh, the last item that I wanted to share with you is at 7 o'clock tonight there will be a webinar if you're interested. It's the webinar about uh, nutrition. Um, I'm very happy to report I was promoted or whatever, elevated to status of warrior today. So that means that I have accumulated the right number of points to make that possible. My team 
me and my team are doing fabulous. We've stayed uh, mostly in the top 10, or we've stayed in the top 10 for most of the weeks of this challenge. Um, the only times we've dropped out is when we've kind of messed up in reporting our stats. But once we report our stats properly, we go back up to top 10 and it's great. So anyway, private message me or reply below. I'd be glad to send you the web address of the webinar. Be delighted to share with you the, the information. Um, actually, the presenter will not be me. It will be Steve Schultz uh, because he is a fabulous trainer. He's well-versed in all of the products. Um, as well as the, the entire, the whole business. And so he's just, he's an amazing wealth of information. And so I highly recommend uh, getting on and learning more about um, getting fit and healthy and then being able to do wonderful things like play in my studio. So thank you so much. I am Teresa at home. And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reply or comments. I'm always willing to entertain an interesting, interesting discussion. This is just part of my art journey, and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you. So see you to again tomorrow night. Thanks.